the fact that we have a tragic death of one of our youth. As a father to a 15-year-old myself, I can't imagine what this family's gone through, but I know I speak on behalf of the entire 3,500 employees at the Sheriff's Office when I say our hearts go out to this family and we certainly mourn the loss of their son. I will reveal what we have up to this point. Uh, we are holding this press conference and putting information out. There were too many people that felt that we were withholding information as a result of this investigation, uh, including or involving one of our deputy sheriffs. Certainly not the case, but I, I preface that by saying that this investigation is extremely complex, like any traffic fatality, and is far from being over. But we wanted to be committed to being completely transparent, and that's the reason we're holding the press conference today, press con the press conference today, to be able to put out what we do have. Uh, I think it's important to note that I did meet with the family earlier today to also reveal these results that we have so far and answer any questions that they had uh, earlier today with the lead investigator and the investigator's chain of command. So let me talk about a little bit about what occurred that evening and what we do know unequivocally up to this date. On January 11th at about 6.25 p.m., two of our deputies, Deputy Montesi and Deputy Van Gilder, and I will give more information on them in a, in a little bit, were traveling northbound on Florida Avenue. Josiah Pinner and a friend went against the red light on 124th Avenue and entered the northeast portion of the intersection. Josiah Penner was following a friend, an, another teenager that was on a bicycle. As the deputy was entering the intersection, he was in an undercover vehicle, followed by a mark unit, another deputy that was behind him. The two of them were attempting to catch back up with the re remainder of their unit that was conducting a mobile surveillance that evening on a bad guy in, in a nearby area. As they're traveling northbound, the deputy sees Joe, or sees the, the teenager on the bicycle that was on the inside lane of traffic. The deputy takes evasive action and goes to go into the change lane and goes into the outside lane of traffic and attempt to avoid the bicyclist, strikes Josiah Penner, continues, realizes a short distance later that he had struck something, and immediately does a U-turn and returns back to the scene where he joins Deputy Van Gilder, who had already stopped at the intersection, placed his patrol car uh, behind the two teens to protect the scene, and, Deputy Van, and joined Deputy Van Gilder, who had already called for medical attention, where the two deputies, the undercover deputy, who some believe was a hit and run and never returned to the scene, uh, is completely false, immediately returned to the scene, and those two deputies render medical aid until the paramedics arrive on scene. Once the paramedics arrive on scene, they take over life-saving measures, and at some point, Josiah Penner is pronounced deceased at the, at the scene. There are four other independent witnesses that can, can testify to the fact that the juveniles had the red light on 124th Avenue. Uh, we also have photographic evidence uh, again, unequivocally stating that the deputies did have the green light. Now again, I want to make it clear that the, that the two juveniles entered on the northeast portion of the intersection, not in the crosswalk, and against the, the, the red light flow of traffic. Now let me give a little information about the deputy sheriff because I know there's been a lot of question as to who has been involved. The deputy sheriff driving the undercover vehicle that struck Josiah Penner is Deputy Philip Montesi. He's 29 years of age. He's with our District 1 Street Crimes Unit, and he's been employed with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office since 2013. Deputy Montesi has been involved in three traffic crashes during his tenure here at the Sheriff's Office, one in April 16 of 2016 and two in 2017, one in February and one in, one in September of 2017, 
All three crashes w were deemed unavoidable, which means that our deputy was found not at fault for those three traffic crashes. Again, this investigation is far from being completed, but being committed to being completely transparent, we wanted to put out what we did have now. Another, uh, not to feed into the rumor mill, but another thing that did come up is the deputy left the scene, which was never the case. The deputy was driving without his lights on. Uh, that's certainly not the case. We also, during our investigation, were able to conclude that the deputy's lights were on uh, the entire path of travel. Now, what happens at this point? We will continue to conduct the investigation. The traffic and homicide investigators still have to follow up with toxicology reports, accident reconstruction, a lot of different uh, investigative techniques have to be deployed before we're able to release the entire investigation. Once this investigation is completed, then the entire investigation will be sent to our internal affairs section. Where our internal affairs section will have the responsibility of ensuring that our deputy sheriff or determining whether our deputy sheriff was outside the operating guidelines, policies and procedures of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Now I know that there's been a lot of emotion in this case, especially in the USF area. We continue to dedicate a ton of resources in such a mobile portion of our community. We have federal traffic enforcement education grants and we fill those each and every day as we try to educate our community and our young people, but our community in the dangers of bicycle and pedestrian traffic in this area. It's incumbent between all of us as a community to make sure that we're doing everything we can to educate not just each other, but our young people in using crosswalks and abiding by all traffic signals when they're entering the roadways and traffic roadways. So I would love and, and advocate for all of us to take some of this energy that all of you feel, some of this emotion that all of you feel, and join the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office in our fight to educate people. So hopefully this is the last person, last person, the last loss of life that we will have in the university area. I now open up to any questions. Sheriff, can you talk about the deputy speed over 20 miles over? Not on, a, on the way to yes. the call, but trying to catch up with the other members of the team. Is that something that is a concern to you? Absolutely, it's a concern. I'm so, I have it highlighted on my notes here that I didn't forget to talk about the fact that the deputy was traveling 66 in a posted 45 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, it, it's, it's concerning, and that's why Internal Affairs will review the case um, to see if his speed justified his actions. But. I, I, absolutely. I think anytime we have a deputy sheriff speeding or, you know, to be honest with you, Chip, anyone who exceeds the speed limit better have uh, a, a very justifiable reason of why they're doing that. And, and we will look into that. What went on with your meeting with the family? And uh, what, what, did they take any solace in what you had to tell them? Or I, I think they took solace in the fact that they had some answers that after 10 days they had been waiting for. But other than that, I, I, I don't think we could apologize enough for the loss of their son's life. I told them when, when you walk, in, walk into the room, I wish I had a magic wand to change things that happened. I wish I had some magic dust, something to change the events that evening. Uh, it was dark out. Our deputies were exceeding the speed limit, doing surveillance. Uh, the, the juveniles entered the intersection. There were a lot of... A lot of factors that contributed to this event happen, and like I said again, the tragic loss of one of our community's juveniles. Any other questions? Any other questions? What is the deputy's status now in terms of employment? <clears throat> yes, that's, that's a good question because I did hear that he had quit, he had resigned, and that's not the case. He is uh, struggling. He is also dealing with a lot of grief that, that, that he caused a death regardless of who's at fault, who's not at fault. And he is using his accrued time to seek professional counseling and treatment. And we told him to take as long as he needed and obviously would do everything we can to make sure he had every tool and resource to help deal with the grief that he's also going through. And so it was a personal decision for him to take off time? Correct. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have suspended him at this point by, by any means. 
he, he felt that he needed to take some time off, some time away from work to seek some professional treatment, and that's exactly what he's doing. And then also just uh, on top of the speeding question, so they were, can you clarify, they were responding, they were following up, so it wasn't a, would that, what would that qualify as? Is that a call that they were speeding to, or they just back up? Because you said. Sur surveillance. They're conducting mobile surveillance. When you're conducting surveillance on a bad guy, it's extremely fluid. And they were trying to catch up with their surveillance team to help do surveillance. Uh, without revealing a ton of investigative techniques when you're doing surveillance there's a lot of change in position of cars you certainly don't want to give yourself away he was attempting to catch back up with his team at that time that both of them were sheriff one more thing we were out there the other night when they had the big uh, vigil and the march to the to the office sheriff's office what would you want to say to the community about staying calm in regards to all this because people are kind of heated out there I, I, and i agree and i understand that emotions should be high whenever we have a loss of of one of our young people, we, we should all be extremely concerned. I think that's what makes us as a community stronger is because we're there for each other. I would just ask for the benefit of the doubt. The Sheriff's Office has always done the right thing. We're completely always committed to being transparent and that's why we're having this press conference today to put out what we know. When it comes to an investigation as sensitive and as complex as this, we can't just put things out and speculate on what we believe may be the case. It, it, so that's why we're very careful on what we put out is to make sure we're able to prove what we put out um, knowing that that's the stance that we have to live with throughout the investigation and, and and beyond and a lot of people equate the fact that you have to take your time on investigation and do a thorough investigation as the fact that you're trying to hide anything when it involves one of your own and i would just assure the community that certainly has never been the case and it won't be the case i right, thank you everybody appreciate you guys thank you thank